Hey everybody, it's Rizion, a React developer with five years of experience, and today I want to share with you how I handle size aware components at Increaser. Let's check it out. Here on the landing page, I have two images, and in order to calculate the width and height of every one of them, I need to be aware of the size of the container. So here we have a container. I want to know its size in order to calculate width and height of both of those images. And if we try to resize the window, you can see that um, it also changes the size of every image. Here are the components that renders product screens. And as you can see here, it's wrapped with a bounding box aware component. And it only provides one parameter called render. And here we pass a function that receives set element and bounding box. So here we um, pass set element to ref and then uh, the bounding box of a component will refer to this element as a container. And the second parameter is bounding box. It could be either bounding box or null. It would be null on the first render where we still haven't set the ref. So here we set content to null. And once we received bounding box, we can do extra calculation in order to set width and height for both of those screens. The bounding box aware component is just a small wrapper around the use bounding box hook. And I use it in rare situation. Usually I just go with this hook, but in some situation, just nicer to wrap it with this component. So here we have a element inside of the state instead of the ref, because in a situation where we use ref, it won't force a render. And because of that, we wouldn't know that we received an element and then use bounded box couldn't be able to calculate a bound box of elements. So in order to uh, get an instant update, we want to use state to store uh, the element. Then we pass it to the hook and here we pass to the render set element that sets um, element to the state and then bounding box of hook. The bounding box type is simply a DOM rect without the to JSON function. In order to convert DOM rect to bounding box, we use this peak from Lodash and then we list all the properties. Inside of use bounding box, we have a state for the box. And what we do here, we check if there is an element and then we call to bounding box and pass uh, get bounding client rect to it. Otherwise, it's null. Then there is a use isomorphic layout effect. It is the same as use layout effect, but it provides like an extra wrapper so that it works on a server side case when you use Next.js or Gatsby. Here we check if uh, there is an element. If there is no element, we don't do anything. And here we have handle element change function. So we take new bounding box by getting this get bounding client rect function. And then we check by using Lodash fun uh, function if those are equal or not. And that's the reason why we want to exclude the two JSON function because we want to have two serializable uh, instances of an object so that we can compare them and not force uh, an extra render and by not changing the state when there's no actual change. Because if we uh, call set box every time, even so the box stays the same, it will force a render and it's not good. So on the change of an element, we call this hand element change right away. And then if the browser supports resize observer, we pass to the resize observer this handle element change and we don't use parameters that resize observer provides because we could always just take this get bounding client rect. And after that, we um, make resize observer observe this element and on amount, we want to disconnect the resize observer. So that's it. I use it all over the app and it works fine. So I hope you found some interesting bits for your project. Stay productive.